Morning, morning. Just don't roll back. Let's put a little bit of air on the windscreen because it's a uh, winter day and it's all a bit, um, it's got a bit of condensation on the windscreen. Also, I'm turning into the sun and all of a sudden four massive great vehicles go past out of nowhere. Uh, so remember that little sign that God exists and he's got a sense of humour? When you're on a road that doesn't see a car from one week to the next and then just when you're about to pull out on it, God sends a traffic jam. So I don't know if you can see in the sky but there, there are four planes straight up ahead all leaving very short uh, contrails going towards France. Thank you very much. Very nice to see a van pull over and let you through. How unusual as well. So I hope you're well. I'm on my way. I've basically got one patient this morning and then I've got the afternoon off. And normally when that happens it's an implant but it's not. I'm doing seven anterior crowns on a very lovely lady of Eastern European origin who uh, once uh, has had a lot of dentistry done as a lot of Eastern Europeans have and um, she has had a ton of root treatments done uh, she's probably in her, I don't know, mid-thirties or something and uh, she's got five upper incisors root treated and uh, three or four molar teeth root treated and I'm increasingly convinced this is because the you know the I don't know the fee for item incentive scheme wherever they are Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Moldova you name it Belarus is um, just incentivizes dentists to do root fillings So anyway, uh, she didn't like her front teeth, which were all crowned, and they were crowned without any post and course. So um, uh, she said she wanted new crowns, and I said to her, if you want new crowns, I'm going to do them on post and course, because my philosophy, restorative philosophy, is one and done. You do it, and then the patient does not come back, even in five or ten years, and say, that thing you did for me has failed. So. Um, and the problem with doing crowns on root treated teeth is that the root treatment drills out the inside of the teeth and the crown drills out the outside. So uh, they then just got to bite into the wrong thing and uh, the whole thing snaps off. So you have to put a post and core in to um, provide the uh, link, you know, the sort of the half. Now look at that. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if you include the one on the left, aircraft, all off fall off to the continent there and all because of the atmospheric conditions mean that um, they've all got a little um, contrails all showing where they are there's another one you probably can't see that because of the sun the left here there's a remains of a bonfire and those I'm trying to get my hands on some of those boxes but I don't want the proper ones I only want the broken ones so I went in and asked if I could have the broken ones and the bloke said oh you'll have to ask the boss and then the next day I went back to ask the boss and they set fire to the lot so there's some recycling for you yeah so now the, the uh, complication in this case is not that um, she doesn't want the work done or doesn't understand about the post and crown, she's totally happy with that. And bear, I mean, bear in mind someone in their mid-30s who's done the amount of work done that she's done, she, she's like, you know, yeah, okay. Um, but it's just that um, her periodontal condition's not brilliant. 
And by not brilliant, I don't mean bad, I just mean not as good. And uh, we worked very hard with her on getting her gums up to into shape. And to the extent where, you know, I was wavering, I was wavering on the edge of saying, no, I'm not going to do these crowns because, you know, with, it's a, and it's a practical thing. I mean, okay, if she wanted to, she doesn't want to brush her teeth, then that's her basic human right. But I do have a problem it's a technical problem doing multiple crowns where you're trying to get a good uh, adaptation to the gum, the gingival level, and uh, and also obviously you have to take impressions and you know you've just got to touch the gum with a burr and, and it starts bleeding and all of a sudden everything goes and starts going pear shaped, doesn't it? So I've done crowns of people with pretty poor gums in the past. I mean we had a, ni a nice lady but she had a, she was missing a front tooth and we spent two months trying to get her to get her gums in shape and uh, and in the end I just thought well they're about as good as they're going to get. They weren't good uh, by any measure but they weren't, uh, you know, but it was just about doable and then we felt sorry for her because we kept her without a front tooth for two, two months. Uh, but she, again, she's one of these cases, an almost intractable case, where uh, you, you tell them what you want them to do, and you show them what you want them to do, and you check that they've done it, and they check you understand what you want, and, and yet it's still not happening, you know? And you remember my three rules about why people don't do what you want them to do. One is that they don't know what, to, what you want them to do, and then the second problem is possibly they know what you want them to do, but they don't know how to do it. And then the third problem is that they know what you want, and also they know how to do it, but they decide they're not going to do it. And technically, these cases would fall into the third category. You know that they are. There's no reason in my mind why they shouldn't be able to improve the condition of their gums just by doing what I want. But sometimes it does turn into a bit of a, um, a tug of war between the two of you as to who's going to give in first. Are you going to give in first and say, all right, well, your guns are, are good enough? Or are they going to give in and say, all right, well, I really want these crowns done. I suppose I'm going to have to start brushing my teeth once a day. So, in her case, it was a slightly strange case in that she came in and I said to her, like, I can't do these crowns unless your gum condition is free. And she literally said to me, I want you to do the crowns. I don't really, I'm, I am happy with the gum condition, therefore, and I want the sound done, therefore, you know, te absolvo, you can do the crowns and I'm not going to come back and complain, well, I say she wouldn't come back and complain about the condition of the gums, but, you know, you've got to the point where I'm a little bit concerned that perhaps in five or ten years time, then these teeth are going to start to get loose. And they might, what happened is, where we've done that in the past, what happens is the teeth themselves don't actually sort of get loose, but what happens is they just start to move. And so your, their lovely crowns, which are all straight and look nice when they're fitted, after two or three years, you find that one of them like, starts to wander forwards out of the mouth. And there's always a debate after it's over, you know, why that's happened and this is what that is. And so you just have to make sure that you're well covered, both in terms of um, recording, which is the most obvious one, putting down that she said that she wanted to do the crown, she'd been told about her gum condition, she'd been given the chance to improve it over several visits, etc, etc. But also um, that um, you're not doing something so totally unreasonable that the General Dental Council would say, what were you thinking, you know, because They'll, they'll, they'll assume what you were thinking. They'll assume that you just did it for the money. That's what they, they'll automatically assume that. They won't ask you why you decided to help this patient, and uh, you know what your what your uh, philosophy is towards um, doing advanced crown and bridge work on patients who are very often compromised, which let's face it, almost everybody is. Um, they'll just say, you know, he, he was greedy saw the, you know, the, the signs and, and 
decided that he's going to do it, even though um, the long term or medium term out prognosis for this work was very poor. And that's, that's just greedy dentistry, greedy poor dentistry. Um, and so, you know, you have to, again, you have to sort of, because a lot of dentistry is defensive now, you have to sort of second guess uh, how Generation Z is going to judge your uh, application of your 40 years experience to, to, uh, to a woman who, you know, is a young woman at the end of the day and wants a really nice set of teeth, a nice appearance. Now, of course, there are uh, treatment variations that you can do to try and get around this, and uh, quite a lot of the um, Eastern European work, you'll see the crowns are joined together. So, for example, if you're doing three to three, the three will be joined to the two, and the one will be joined to the one, and the upper left two and three will be joined together, the other two and three. Or you could even join three together, and you can do three, two, one, all abutments, and then the other side similarly. Um, if you're not worried about getting a centre line gap, um, which is pretty unlikely because you know all three teeth would have to move, and you're working on the principle of the legs of a stool, that if you've got uh, three points of contact, then you don't get any movement in any in, in the x, the y, or the z axis. Whereas um, with uh, one one point of contact can move in any direction, two points of contact can move in uh, two directions. Um, once you've got your three points of contact, they're pretty well stuck until such point as one of the teeth literally falls out of the gum. And even then, you might not, uh, you know, it might, it might survive for a while longer. I've got a new, can you see my new steering wheel cover? I don't like it. Basically it's a children's bicycle tyre with a little bit of mesh stitched on the outside. And when you hold it, because it's rubber, your your hands smell of rubber. You know, like, I mean, you know, like, it's a fresh rubbery smell, but you, you smell like you work in a tyre factory or a tyre uh, 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 repair shop, you know. Or your, you know, you've got, it's got that sort of bicycle tyre smell about it. The, pure, the, pure, the black rubber smell. So I don't recommend it. In the old days, you used to get like a leather uh, steering wheel cover that laced up the inside, and that, that was much better. I, you can't, I can't see that you can get those these days. Perhaps you can, I just didn't look hard enough. I still thought this would be alright. Not only that, it's a nightmare to get on your steering wheel. But you can imagine trying to fit a bicycle tyre out over your steering wheel where the bicycle tyre is just like very slightly too small. So you have to warm it up and then really stretch it and get a spoon handle and get the, get the spoon handle to get it round and then you find that it's not uh, symmetrical so you have to take it off and then put it on again. And So anyway, but I mean this car's done good knows, you know, 110,000 miles now, so but I did want to put a but the steering wheel's deteriorating. So anyway, my uh, my other big case was the guy who came in who got a internally resolved um, upper left central. We managed to um, on the Tuesday we took an impression, we made him a partial upper, IR, upper left one, acrylic, and then uh, then on the Wednesday he got married, so we splinted, but we didn't fit the denture, we just made it, we took the impression and made it, and on the Wednesday we splinted the tooth, and um, and then he and then he had his wedding, and so he got all the wedding photos and everything, and that worked really well, because the splint was, you know, lasted really well, just for that day and then yesterday Thursday we got him back and um, removed the essentially the crown of the tooth because the crown of the tooth was was attached to the gum a little bit but not really to the root 
but uh, to the two teeth either side via the splint and so we uh, literally just remove the crown of the tooth and then and then just the way the splint and then um, last but not least did a quite a delicate extraction of the uh, apex of the upper left one tooth and um, and fix it the denture which actually looked quite good you know and believe it or not today or tomorrow he's going on honeymoon for three months so we packed him off with the denture and uh, some instructions and a uh, and a tube of denture glue and then three months time obviously I'm going to I'll make him a Maryland bridge or something and it'll be permanent what a weird thing but he was over the moon with it you know he really decided it was a we've done an excellent job for him he was very pleased I mean obviously he's on, he's on a high because he's just got married for the second time I think but uh, nice nice guy so that was good and so um, I'll let you know but I need to have a chat with this woman about um how many of these teeth we're going to splint together, if any. If I don't splint any of them together, then I'll be inclined to make her an Essex retainer and just tell her to wear this Essex retainer at night and then make it a condition that she comes and sees me every three months to monitor the perio condition. Because honestly, I don't want to get into a post-match discussion about why why the teeth are why all the bones gone around the team. Oh, it's a nice day today. We've had a lot of weather fronts over and this day the first reading sort of day with no or absolutely no cloud. I'm going to go and try and pick up my plane, which is stuck at Thorough. Alright, Mr. Angry. Mr. Angry, what are you doing right in the middle of the road like that? Yeah, so I've allowed, uh, she's kind of getting at nine, and I've allowed till about half eleven to do these seven crowns. I mean, I don't think I will need two and a half hours to do this. And she's certainly not going to want to spend two and a half hours in the chair. I mean, if I can get it all over and done with in, say, an hour or so, I'll be very happy. Watch this. Charlie 9, November. Charlie Golf. He's going to do something a bit silly, I think. Overtaking on a roundabout. Never mind, my friends, you're going to be immortalised on YouTube in your tiny little expensive car. It's precisely 20 feet in front of mine now. And whether or not, wherever we're going, three seconds earlier. The other, I mean, the only other thing, I mean, it, when you're planning a job like this, I would say is you've got to have a good nurse and think ahead to the extent that um, if you're doing, um, say, five posts, which is unusual, then you're going to need five impression posts, aren't you? So, um, you know, and they might, you might want them all to be the same. We use the power post system. We might want five red para post impression posts or five black I mean three red and two black wouldn't be so much of a problem we'd probably more likely to have that in stock but then for every impression post you need a burnout post to send that to the lab so you know if I get in there my first question to Lulu is going to be uh, have we got enough impression posts now, suppose if she said, no, we haven't got five of any one size, 
then what I'll do is I'll use a, a mixture of sizes but I won't uh, you know I mean that's not a problem because uh, if you're going to do post crowns on try not to run over any pedestrians if you're going to uh, do post crowns on let's say 32112 then the chances are the three is going to need a larger post anyway and then and possibly the central as well so you could do three large and two small on the laterals or one large and four small on the incisors so, you know, we'll manage the only problem will be literally if we don't have five impression posts even then even then So wish me luck. Have a good day. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.